Welcome, 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 one and all to another live edition of The Extra Point. We got the entire crew in the house today. I'm excited about that. Making his triumphant return to the middle square, Mr. Michigan Mike, Michael Hasso. How goes it? What's up, everyone? Glad to be back. Glad to have you back, sir. And flanked to our right playing the X slot receiver is our residential international sports correspondent all the way from the DR of Miss Tasha T. Sissel. How goes it down there in the DR today? Well, I didn't have such a good day. I woke up, my dog had blood in her urine, so to take her to the vet. And on my way from going, coming from the vet to back home, I got rear-ended. Oh, wow. So, and dealing with the police here is different from, you know, dealing with police in the States. I had to call my, a guy here that I call my son, had to call him to make sure they weren't trying to hose me here. But I'm okay, which is why I still have on the dress that I've had on since 7 o'clock this morning. Oh, wow. Okay, well, I, well thoughts and I prayers. I didn't get to put on what I wanted to put on, but you'll see it. Well, Michigan is rocking the the uh, Michigan Mike's rocking the the logo for us, so so we're all sit in that regard because I'm dressed like I'm going to a funeral, and it, it it's really the the Clippers funeral. But before we do that, Tasha T Sizzle, can you please give us today's sponsor? It is May Jane's Coffee. That's M A E J A N E S Coffee dot com. You can get your Colombian, your Honduran, and your Brazilian blend coffee, fresh ground by my daughter. Sasha Denise. I think she goes by Denise Denise now on Facebook. But okay. You can um, order online. Right now, she is not in stock because she's doing a launch July 18th in Nashville, Tennessee. And after that, you will be able to go ahead and place your orders. You can get your bundles, which has your syrups and everything. And she has several different recipes. If you follow her on Instagram, it's May Jane's Coffee on Instagram. And she shows you different recipes of how you can make iced coffee and, and different things like that. But again, that's MayJanesCoffee.com. Right on. And we are looking forward to July the 18th. We are proud of you, Denise. Denise, um, I actually named my sister's middle name Denise, actually. So uh, that runs in the family. Now, before we get started, because ladies and gentlemen, these two are officially on the hot seat. I've got a gazillion questions that I'm going to fire off at them. Rapid fire pace. But before we do, I want to give a shout out to a couple of old school legends, Mr. Bobby Brown. And, and Mr. Keep Sweat, who had a versus battle last night. So, as a warm up, real quick, Tasha, Michigan Mike, you're on a long road trip across the country. You can only have one person's discography to listen to the whole time. Will it be Bobby Brown or would it be Keep Sweat? Megan is forever. Okay. <laughs> Don't let her love in. That's pretty good. Oh, I would be right. That was pretty good. That was in perfect pitch. Car accident and all. Oh, what's up, Kenny? Man, what's up, Michael Harris? Kenny says Keith Sweat. Michael, yes. who, who, who say you? Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with Keith Sweat. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yes. I can, you know what? I'm I'm flabbergasted because look, let's just start fighting right off the top of the show. How y'all gonna disrespect? Mr. Bobby Brown, how y'all gonna disrespect Mr. Telephone Man? How you gonna disrespect my prerogative? How you gonna disrespect Roni? Don't you know the truth about a Roni? She's a real special girl. I wanna please you. <laughs> hey, I wanna twisted, be. twisted was the jam, though. Shouts out to Keep Sweat. <laughs> twisted was the jam. All right, so already. I am behind on the scorecards. Uh, everybody in the comments is going to keep sweat. So we're going to move right along. Now, one half of the NBA Finals is set. The Phoenix Suns are entering their first Finals since 1993, a special year for us, Tasha. Um, Shouts out to 1993. Get booked. <laughs> right. That's when we graduated with our old asses. Um, so we know it's been a while. Okay, my question to you, we're going to start right here in the middle square of Michigan, Mike. If if CP3, who's been all the talk, all the rage, everybody's been rooting for him, if he wins the title, does that make him a top five point guard of all time? You say what? First of all, I haven't been rooting for him. I don't really like CP3. Uh, he's just too soft for me. You know, what? And, and that's kind of what was going on, you know, with the pushing thing. And they're like, see, that's why no one messes with you. So, um, 
I'm going to say no. Um, he's top 10 for sure, but my top five, I'm just going to ramble it off real quick. Magic, hey, go for it. Magic, Isaiah, Steph, Jason Kidd, and Stockton are my top five. Okay. All right. All right. Tasha T. Sizzle, what say you? CP3, a top five point guard of all time if he gets the championship? No. Because you go back and look at some of the other point guards, and just off the top of my head, I think of Gary Payton. Was he better than Gary Payton? No. Oh, the glove was a monster. Was he better than John Stockton? No. N none of them have rings. See, that goes back to my argument of always valuing the rings over the actual talent and the play. Like the, Brian Scalabrini with Boston. He has a job in Boston. Who is he better than? Well, Okay. All right. But, good point. But I'm, good point. I do agree a little bit with uh, Mike. For some reason, I want to root for Chris Paul, but it's that he's more of a crybaby to me. Not as far as his on the court play. Just, I mean, I remember when he hit the guy in the, you know, mm -hmm. in the private area. I mean, just little things like that makes me. And he's done that several times. Yes, I don't want to root for him. Right. Right. Like. Um, Chris Paul reminds me of the uh, of the family member or the kid at school that will antagonize you, antagonize you, antagonize you, and then when you sock them in the nose, it, it you know they go run to the principal and get you in trouble. That's Chris Paul to me. And right here on on, on my notepad, I had a question: Am I hating if I'm saying nah, I don't want Chris Paul to win the championship? I'm sick of him. I'm sick of him and Cliff Paul, to be honest. Both of them can go sit down somewhere at the next family reunion. Okay, so we're we're all in agreement there. On Chris Paul, um, I like your list, Mike. I think if right off the top of my head, I'm gonna say Magic, of course, Isaiah, of course, Steph, of course. Uh, then I'm going AI, and I'm going Westbrook mm -hmm. with with my five as far as just pure point guards. Uh, T Sizzle, uh, how's your I mean, I mean, and, and there, I don't have my glasses on. I left them in the in the banyo, so I don't have my glasses on. So that's why. That's why I keep doing this because I can't. Okay. See. <laughs> and, and those are other two other names Stop you can add: AI, AI, and uh, Westbrook, who don't have rings. And CP3 is oh, is not better than mm -mm. than them. When I watch his game, I just don't see I don't see transcendent generational talent that that your kids and grandkids will be talking about. I just don't see that. I mean, he was a good player. He just never quite made it. We'll see. Now yeah. moving on to the finals. We have two teams on the other side, the Suns and the Bucks. It's three two Bucks right now. What would be a better M NBA Finals for you to watch, in your opinion, Mike? Suns versus Hawks or Suns versus Bucks? I'm gonna go Hawks just because of what Young his swagger I really like, and I know Booker. They're both up and coming right now, and Booker's more of the silent but deadly type. Right. And so I would like to see that matchup. Um, Giannis is just. Man, I feel bad because this is his year to get one if he wants to get one. Right. And, um, but, I mean, we'll see. I mean, that for me as a fan, I'd rather see the Hawks. Kenny Man agrees with you. He says Hawks. Tasha T. Sizzle, Hawks, Bucks. Who would you rather see face the Suns in the finals? I would rather see the Bucks simply because I do like Giannis. And as Mike said, if he's going to win one, this is his year. This is his time right. to win. But as far as matchups, I think the Hawks would be better because they kind of have similar styles of play within the teams. Like More the up Bucks and down are, pace, yeah. Right. The Bucks are just big in your wakes. Like when I take when I messaged you last night about Brooke Lopez, he was setting it on fire. On when I fire, you, yes. When I sent that to you. And they were just out rebounding them. <clears> I mean, <throat> at one point, right before they pulled up the graphic, I told my friend Sam, I said, they're, I said, if they lose this game, it's because they're being out-rebounded. And then Reggie Miller pulled it. was a 9-2 to two difference in the mm -hmm. rebounds at that point. Uh, I just don't think Phoenix, with those big bodies of the Bucks, I don't think they could win. But with Atlanta, it's going to be a oh, it's gonna be a barn burner because you got uh, Danilo, you got Trey, and what's the other kid that shoots it from outside? I just – that was uh, be exciting. You got uh, Huter and uh, – Yeah, Donovan. him. Yeah, so <laughs> Donovan. That's him. That's him. That yeah. shoots from – from the outside, and that that would just be a good uh, a good matchup. But for me, any team that was not in the Pacific or the Mountain Time Zone would benefit <laughs> me because I'm on a constant right. Eastern Time Zone, and by the right. time the games come on, I'm nocturnal. Right, right. That's rough. Um, I'm gonna go back to sipping my haterade as I take a little swig of it. 
Um, I'm going for the Bucks to to meet because I don't want to see Trey Young and CP3 on the same court. All that flopping, like no, that's too much flopping. Both of them will be will be brushing each other and knocking each other off the off their marks, and it'll basically be a, a, a battle of attrition on who fouls out first. I love their swagger as far as the Atlanta Hawks. I do. Um, Mike, you're absolutely right. If you're going to do it, uh, Milwaukee, now's your time to do it. And here's why. Basically, we're at a point now to where there's been a record 10 All-Stars from this season that missed considerable time in these playoffs due to injury. And technically, it's 11 because Trey wasn't an All-Star, but he's an All-Star caliber player. If you get to bypass a Kyrie and you don't have to play LeBron, and you don't have to play, play um, some of these teams that, that would have been healthy at the beginning of the season, Giannis and the Bucks. If you don't get it this year, you're not going to ever get it. Now, with that said, which injury? Because injuries have been the main story of these playoffs. Which superstar injury do you think had the biggest impact on the playoffs, Mike? I'm going to go with AD, um, just in the fact that the that was his Lakers team, or I guess is. Um, and we were saying that last year that LeBron had to get AD, and if he didn't have AD, he wasn't going to win it. And we saw it. Right. So AD goes out, and LeBron, I wouldn't say gave up, but he was pretty much like, we're not, we don't have what it takes, so I'm going to just sit this one out too. <laughs> so right. I'm well, gonna say, a puck move. That's not a king move, and I'll say that myself. I um, just pass the, pass the ball like I always do when it's time to hit the big shot. Don't do that. Don't Those do that. fighting words right there. So You are you, – now you know I keep it on deck. Now don't 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 make me pull out the crown. He's still the king, although his days are numbered. Tasha, whose injury had the biggest impact on the playoffs in your opinion? Ooh, the Earth is flat. Kyrie and James. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I think that would have made all the difference in the world with Brooklyn had those two not been injured. Uh, remember, we again we had the same discussion about injured players going out there and playing. Harden really did not benefit right. Brooklyn by going out there with that hamstring that right. he had no business going on. I really right. think having your floor general, I mean, KD can, can he can lead a team, but you, you, I don't care what type of player you are, you need a floor general. If that's not your natural position, you need someone out there to dictate. Bam, bam, bam. I, so I right. really yeah, go with the Kyrie and the Harden injury. I love both of those answers and for the reasons that you both gave. I'm going to go with Kawhi Leonard. I just honestly think that they would have beat the Suns with with Kawhi and been in the finals. And I think the Clippers with the healthy Kawhi and, and the supporting cast would have been a favorite over Giannis or Atlanta. Um, so, yeah, that, those are three good ones. Now, of course, again, AD being out, that knocked LeBron out. So that, that was huge. Brooklyn would have won it all with a healthy <laughs> – Kyrie, yeah, the state the whole time. But I, I think as we moved along, the the uh, Kawhi loss was just was just it just messed up my NBA finals. Um, speaking of Kawhi, I tagged you two in a post that came out yesterday that uh, since Kawhi now is is his season is over, he's a, a free agent to be, and uh, rumors among NBA circles, executives, and sources of the like say that the Dallas Mavericks and the Miami Heat are the two biggest front runners to snatch him from LA. Now that now you're a Mavs fan right here in the middle, Mike. So, you know, we're going to come right here to you. If you're Kawhi Leonard, do you stay in LA with a team that made it this far without you in the playoffs championship caliber roster with a championship coach that coached his butt off in the playoffs in Talu, or do you take your talent South and play with the, a young upcoming superstar in Luka Doncic? I might be a little biased here, but uh, I would I would definitely go with the the Dallas and um, check and see. Honestly, if I had to pick and choose, because I know Dame is also in the mix mm -hmm. of uh, Dallas wanting him to not as verbal as uh, as uh, Kawhi, but I would rather take uh, Lillard over because he has more of a fight and drive, which I think Luca needs, and Luca and Kawhi. They're both kind of silent players. Um, Luca likes to have fun, but he also doesn't have that leadership that I think the Mavs need. Okay, Tasha, what say you? Should Kawhi stay in L.A. or should he go to Dallas? Not should he stay in L.A. He's going to stay in L.A. All right. Okay, say it with your chest. No, I'm, I'm going to give you my reasons why. When okay. he left to Toronto, 
there was no need for him to leave Toronto Absolutely other than the no. fact that he wanted to be back home. He wanted to be able to be in San Diego, take a, a trip, you know, the helicopter to, uh, to, to practice and to the games. That's what he wants. So why would he move or leave L.A. when he had every opportunity? To, the, the Raptors could have gone back to back. Yeah, they, they, would, they have. would have. Yeah, they, they would have won again had he stayed. But he left only because he wanted to go home. I don't think it's necessarily the money for him. And then the thing with you all was saying about Dame, he was in on the hiring for Chauncey Billups. So why would he leave? I mean, if you, you got the guy you wanted, I mean, for all intents and purposes, that's, you know, you agreed with that. I, my thoughts on that is it, with, with Kawhi, he's such an enigma and he's always doing something that if he think we think he's going left, he's going to go right. So if he did wind up in Dallas, it would not surprise me. Um, right. I would agree with Mike in the sense that if I'm Mark Cuban, given the fact that I just hired um, Nico Harrison, who was a Nike executive, who's a close friend of uh, Damian Lillard, I would much rather have that relationship on board with my young superstar than somebody who never even had a relationship with Nike and Kawhi Leonard. Who, who's he with? Puma, New Balance. Who's I mean, he, he left. Carthus? He left. He left Team Jordan to go to New Balance. I mean, and he yeah. had a pair of the coldest Jordans at that All Star game. That the coldest Jordans. And then he left and went to New Balance. Went from Nike to Reebok. Huh? Balance, yeah. Look at his knees. That, that was a, a little residential bump right there. Uh, Chris Paul got pushed harder than Kawhi got bumped when he tore his knee up two weeks ago. So, New Balance, what are you doing? I think that that might be a conflict of interest. Plus, with Luka, Luka's not having this, oh, I practice when I want to, because we've heard those reports with Kawhi Leonard. The whole, I, you know, I'm going to sit up in the rafters when I'm hurt instead of being down here with the team. Kawhi is not – he doesn't need to have – to be ball dominant, but I do think that his personality with Luka, like can he really let Luka be the leader? Because Luka's going to be the ball dominant leader. Chris Porzingis found that out the hard way, and he couldn't handle it. Could have Kawhi let him handle <laughs> Right. And, and, and Luka was about to whoop his ass for that. <laughs> get a brother, get a table dance. Get a table dance. Right. Now, as a, as a Grizzlies fan – I would much rather see Kawhi in Dallas than than uh, Lillard in Dallas because if you put a, a sniper on the other side of a guy who's a walking triple double, you're just asking for problems. And think about it: Dallas took a healthy Clippers team to seven games, and really had a what twenty point lead in Game Three. That should have been over. So mm-hmm. I think the Mavericks are a lot closer than than not to winning a championship. I think Lillard will put that over the top and not Kawhi. I think Kawhi would be a disaster in, in Dallas. Shouts out to my aunt Paulette, namesake, Marcus Stone, checking in. What's good? What's good? Um, let's get into some some college. Mike, can you can you can you sit up straight real quick so we can see that glowing block M? Yeah, oh, that no. nice sign. Oh, oh yes. No. The countdown is on, ladies and gentlemen. The boys are almost back. Damn it. And the NCAA just threw the players a bone. The NIL has been approved for this year. And for those who don't know, it's the name, image, and likeness, where the players can now get paid for endorsements, signing autographs, local local endorsement deals, and things of that nature. Mike, you said last year on the Extra Point, way long time ago, that the NCAA was about to crumble, fall like the old Roman Empire. Is this the straw that's going to break the NCAA's back? It's definitely getting there. I mean, I, I definitely smell blood, right? So, like, the first time that we heard about this and people were like, um, you know, we want a playoff system and then we want this. You know, uh, back in the day, the NCAA was like, no one can say anything or else they're shutting you down. You know, they're giving right. you the death penalty here and there. Right. Can you imagine someone or them saying, we're going to give you the death penalty to a top school like that, like now? Right. Mm. No, it could, there's too much money on the line for that. So, so you can definitely smell the blood in the water, and they're they're wounded a little bit, letting go some of this freedom. Um, when you do that, that's opened up the doors for everything else. So, and and it makes these conferences a lot more interdependent than than um, you know than dependent on the NCAA. Tasha T. Sizzle, your thoughts on the NIL? I don't think it will end the NCAA because 
you're still going to need an entity over top to kind of say, okay, this, this, and this. But it's going to take away some of that revenue. That they, I mean, you think all the money that the NCAA makes, we say this year in, year out. And, yeah, the, they say, oh, the players get um, room and board. They get this. They get that. But those kids still struggle. My daughter worked in the athletic department where she received some of those perks. But guess what? I still had to give her money. Right. You, you know, that just because they're down there for free, they still have needs. They have necessities that just that scholarship and things like that don't cover. And we're going to, now I know this is coming earlier, but I may have to go ahead and just spoil it now. At that time, when Shoelace was on the cover of that Madden college football, that was the, the, one that was, most, came out. the most popular. Imagine how much money he would have made off of that. Wow. With and we're going to use that Couching Team Sizzle. So look at my we're child. She made 210 a game. Wow. Now, the thing is, right here at the Extra Point, you're getting real live stuff from people who actually walk the walk and talk the talk. Um, I got to get used to saying Denise Denise, but Denise Denise was a, a avid member of the uh, athletic department at, at uh, Mississippi State. Why you had, do you want to go ahead and toot your horn real quick since I brought up State? Then you went to all my dogs, all my dogs. All the dogs. <laughs> I just wanted y'all to beat Vandy because they beat us two years, three years ago. So congratulations to the dogs for that. Marcus, you're in the comments. He has a son that's going to be a freshman at TCU. My question to you guys as parents, because, Mike, you got kids that, that will be in college before you go to sleep and wake up again. They're, they're growing up every day. And if they were basketball, baseball, soccer, tennis, whatever their sport of choice, or even gaming, how much do you think um, the pressure is on these kids to manage this type of money? Like, we've already seen Bo Nix. He's got a, a, a deal with uh, Milo's T. We're seeing kids getting $20,000 endorsement deals, $30,000. There's Uncle Sam involved. Do you think the kids will be able to handle this and be uh, amateur athletes too? I think some will for sure. I mean, it's just the, the drive, right? Like some people have it, some people don't. I think majority – of the athletes don't or students in general don't have that um i think it's closer and closer to the real life world of like hey people take advantage of you people don't pay you on time you know they take right. this from you you ruin this part and then you're right. on contract for this that you didn't read like right i think opening this door uh, they'll have to get their own lawyer they have to get their own accountant like that opens the door for all these things that you do have to pay for and then they're like oh that's not even worth it or oh or it's too overwhelming or oh i'm not missing this or this part of school or i'm m missing these workouts like i think for sure a small percentage will be able to do it but for the large majority i i don't think they're ready that's a great like, point this is where the this is where the ncaa could come into play if they're going to receive these funds, have it set up where they can learn literacy about fi financial literacy. They can have them set up with attorneys or whatnot to manage this money. Like people that are with the NCAA, not just Joe Schmo down the street who runs a company who will take them for their money because we've heard stories like that before. This is what the NCAA needs to be doing, not trying to determine whether or not these children, these athletes get paid for their licenses. I mean, it's, I remember when, when Sasha was at Mississippi State, Dak Prescott jerseys were, I mean, that was the hottest commodity. This shirt that I just hung up, that I just held up with Mississippi State on it, this shirt says Stark Vegas on it. Do you know how hard it was to get this shirt? This is a Dak Prescott era Mississippi State shirt. Now, so, like, imagine how much money these 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 athletes could have. Everybody's not going to make it. Let's say Dak. I mean, Dak already went in the fourth round. Let's just say he went in the fourth round and he fizzled out, and then he has nothing. But Mississippi State is clanga clanga in Davis Wade every Saturday. Right. Win, lose, or draw. Win, lose, or draw. It's it's clanga clanga, and th and these these universities and some especially these top tier universities when you go to them and see the grounds, how the universities are well kept well mm -hmm. managed mm -hmm. that money is coming off of those students because not all alumni is donating money right and then right. this is and i meant to ask you this too how would this trickle down to like 
HBCUs and as far as who gets paid what. And also, I don't know if this is still true. Someone may need to fact check me. They're saying if the players make money, that it has to be divided amongst all the other athletes, kind of like a, a median amount. Is that true? Now, from what I heard with that, now Texas quarterback Sam Ellinger said that that had he been a part of the NIL, he would have spread the wealth around to his offensive linemen and the people who protect them, kind of like a running back gives his line watches if he runs for 2,000 yards. So if I win the Heisman and I get this money, I'm going to spread it around. I think he said that more as a as a – uh, as what he felt personally about okay. his teammates and how they would do that. I don't think that's a rule, but okay. um, you bring up, both of you bring up an interesting point that I want to kind of delve a little deeper into as far as the, the kids financial side of this, because it's not just the kids. A lot of these kids are coming from, from places to where there will be immense pressure on them to take care of home. You got, mm -hmm. look at the university of Miami. Y'all saw that 30 for 30 where some of those kids were coming from. Now, you know good and damn well a Michael Irvin or, or Warren Sapp or um, or Andre Johnson or pick any of the Hall of Famers that went to Miami, the places that they came from down in Liberty City, the pressure from mama, auntie them, your brother, your sister, you know, pulling on you for money because right. you just saw a $20,000 deal with the Toyota dealership down the street. Like, could that be something that, that could cause problems for these student athletes? as well and and what's going to be the ncaa's role in that I, I, if you all want to know the all of the different rules and regulations of the nil I, I it's some really good reading but it's too much for us to unpack here there are some stipulations but i worry about the kids that come from the impoverished areas that hadn't seen the money are they going to you know like what's going to become of that as far as their their the, the support system around them again that's why the ncaa needs to step in but it is hard when you know you live in a two-room shack and you're a star player, not to send that money home. Right. But it's we all saw broke as well. On yes. The 30 for 30. That should be required reading material exactly. for every player. <laughs> Everybody, every player, they need to sit down when you're having your uh, special meeting, special teams meeting, whatever, and they need to play that because that's also something that could, that's the negative part about giving someone who's never had anything money, not even athletes. Look at these people who win the lottery, but mm -hmm. they're broke in two or three years because they never had that much money. They don't know what to do with it and they make foolish decisions. Again, that could be a role that the NCAA could play in, right. you know, teaching them, don't do this. I know, you know, you, you such and such want this, you know, you need to buy your niece or your nephew something because your sister can't afford it. But if you continue to give all your money away, you're going to be at the same place where you started. You're going right. to be broke. You're going to be eating right. top ramen. Right. Now, Mike, let me ask you this. This is a fascinating conversation. So I'm going to try to get through all of the different points to come up to the top of my head so we can keep the show moving. But but this just came to me. Does this give certain um, geographical locations an advantage? Let's say, for instance, um, if, if you're the USC Trojans, out in L.A. when there were no Raiders, there were no Rams, you were the only ticket in town. Does that give you an advantage? If you're in Ann Arbor, where you're the only thing in town as opposed to a place like New York, where, where if you're up there with Rutgers or St. John's and you have so many other things going on, do, the, do those teams in the South that, that are Texas, for instance, pick a Texas school that, that doesn't have a rabid fan base that can really pour into these players. Do you think that that will create a competitive disadvantage for some of these non-Power 5 schools? Uh, for the non power five schools, yes, and anything non power five school is definitely gonna hurt from this. Um, any of the power five schools that, like what you just said, like a Nebraska or a Michigan, compared to like a Dallas area, I don't see that it being a big deal just because it's we're in the new age of internet and apps, and people can sign up things like so. You could say, you know, someone at Rutgers could be right down the street and have a conversation with uh, someone in at, uh, NYC. So like, that's not a huge deal because we have Zoom meetings and we have different other virtual meetings that we can sign up and set up contracts. So I don't think that that's huge, um, but yeah. for sure any non-Power 5 would be hurting from this. Now, Tasha, uh, would you, would that play a role in recruiting if your son was a, a top D1 prospect 
of what the what can be offered to him outside as it relates to the N- NIL. Uh, in, in, you know, in addition to his chances of going pro, the school, the academics, and all of that, will that will that factor into your decision on where your child goes to school? Yes, depending on my socioeconomic background. We all saw blue chips. Remember, uh, he was out there buying tractors. He Penny Hardaway's uh, m- uh, mom, uh, Alfred Wood, got a new house. He went down to the slums, uh, the jungle of not slums, but the jungle of Louisiana to get Shaq out of there. If you are school A and you say, if you come here, look at where we are. Look at what you can get in endorsements just off of your name and likeness. But if you go here, school B, hey, their enrollment is low. They don't have a lot of fan base. Look where they are. That's that's true. Now, let me ask you this. Who would, what, what former athlete that we've watched in the last 10, 20 years, do you think would have totally demolished this NIL and secured the major bag in college? Anybody come to mind, Michigan Mike? Well, first couple of names that come to mind for me would be like Cam Newton. Um, oh, yeah. Ray Bush, Vince Young, for sure. So, like, mm. that Rose Bowl was like, man. Um, I didn't even like either of those teams, but I was there and I was eating popcorn and biting my nails. So I would say probably Vince Young, especially being uh, Texas and all that revenue that Texas brings when they're doing well, he would have blown it out of the water. Oh, that's a good one. Tasha T. Sizzle, who say you? Oh, I mean, Reggie Bush already got paid. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Get him, man, his Heisman back. But um, I would be inclined to think before all the social media was just really blown up, you got to take that part out. Now you have to think more current players because of social media would make more money, but Cam would have been great. He has that, yes, like Sasha Tyron Matthew before. The honey badger. Matthew, the, can you, the honey badger? He would have been doing honeycomb commercials. He would have been doing, he would have been doing everything. There are a slew of star college athletes who could have benefited. I mean, tremendously if this had been a rule or been in place when they were playing, but Cam, I know people went down on uh, the owner at that time. I can't think of his name when he was saying something about Cam not having uh, tattoos. Mike, you ain't right. <laughs> Keep going, Tasha. <laughs> about him ha- not having tattoos. That would have been marketable for him. You had a good-looking black kid when, when he didn't have the scarf, when Mary, when Mary J. Blige scarves on his head. Clean cut. The not going to cross scarf. Right, the not going to cross scarf. That's marketable right there. Pretty, like yeah. the pretty teeth. That's marketable. Right. And so he could be there in, Right. And then he's in Alabama. Everything would have been geared towards him in the state of Alabama. All right. Now, now we're going to pause this for just a second because we're going to bring on a special impromptu guest here, Mr. Mr. Unapologetic Hustle, the hustler himself. Mr. Marcus Stone. Marcus, welcome to the show. What's um, good, baby? What's happening? What's good? Now, we want to bring you on, for, especially for this segment, and, and, and feel free to stick around because you have a son that, that will be playing this fall for the uh, TCU, correct? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So look at him being all cool. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Frogs up. So let me let me ask you this. Um, as a father of a son, that now this is all going into transition. Is this a conversation that you and Junior have already had? Uh, to be honest with you, man, you already know how I roll. We we've been talking but about. The people this. need to know how you roll, Marcus. The people. I mean, yeah. I mean, but you know, we we've been talking about that for a while. Um, but you know, everything in my household is business. So even even before the NIL discussion, you know, what do you do to brand yourself, right? You know, um, the university gives you a platform for you to be whatever it is, even if you don't make it to the league, you know, you have the opportunity to make a name for yourself that can follow you. So the NIL in my household just, you know, only amplifies what we already talk about, you know. So I, I really think it's just the family dynamics like Michigan Mike talked about it. T Sizzle talked about it. It really comes to the grounding of the the dynamics of the family that will, you know, make or break these these student athletes in in those situations right the people they surround themselves with so um 
you know, my son personally, he he ain't that interested in it. He just want to play ball. <laughs> so <laughs> that's just right. But see, you and Top T Sizzle and Michigan Mike have one thing in common. Your kids ain't starving for it and everything. You see these? You see Mike's background? Yeah, have you seen the pool in the back? Have you seen, I think the cat got their own floor in his house. And so he got new furniture for Father's Day. New right. Father's he got a whole patio. <laughs> he ain't get no socks. So, like, this kid's ain't waking up wondering where the next meal is coming from, and neither yours, because both of y'all could be on MTV Cribs. I'm just keeping it real. I've been in both houses. I will babysit the house anytime you <laughs> and the wife want to go out of town. So, so you so, saying so? What you trying to say, Marcus? Is you didn't get a tractor from Nick Nolte? No, <laughs> I'm hustle, baby. <laughs> no, no, Mike. Let me come to you real quick, Mike. Mike, um, as a father, a as a parent, as an overseer, will there be any stipulations that you will place on what type of endorsement your child would would make? Because you you'll be facing this in a few years if your children decide to pursue uh, further athletics. Oh, definitely. Like, you know, what, you know, Hustle was saying is like it it's a brand that you make for yourself. And it's like not even business. Like we got to make this brand before you get into the actual business. Mm -hmm. But like you got to be out there as if people are all watching you, because once they are watching you, it's already too late. Mm -hmm. So creating that and saying like, oh, is this did you dive into that company? Did you see what how they were started from? How are they looking at now? What's the company's brand look like? Do the people like them? Because then that's going to reflect on you and people are going to brand y'all the same once you start doing partnerships with them. So mm -hmm. for sure. Excellent point, Marcus and, and Tasha. With that being the case, as African-American parents, does that put it an increased amount of pressure on you to to vet these companies that's trying to endorse your children? Yes, because you, no one, even if you're white, no one wants their child or even themselves to be exploited or used. And then, oh, well, we're done with them. Send them on his way. No one wants that. Right. Yeah, I think it, it's, it's really the circle, man. Um, again, because you got now you got um, average, you got marketing agencies out there saying that they're they're willing to do X, Y and Z. Right. So right. what's the if you don't understand the dynamics, what's the bigger ploy? Right. So if you got a up and coming marketing agency that now says that they have, you know, 20 D1 high caliber student athletes to to market, that only lifts them. You know, so what's the end goal? You always got to focus on the end goal. And that's what that's what we talk about. What's the end goal? Because, you know, me being me, I'm your I'm your biggest marketer. Point blank, period. You know, your family, your friend, you know, those in that circle. We can get you the visibility. You can create your own, you know, uh, uh, pathway. You don't necessarily have to have it. But again, if you don't understand, and you just get caught up. Oh, I can get paid. I mean, that's what's going to happen. You're going to have a lot of people get tied up with these agencies or other companies or get into a sponsorship. And, you know, the sponsorship has has certain I, I attribute this to record deals back in the day where oh boy. performers you know they they made the name they they were the thing but they didn't get none of the money so right. you it's know not ray charles asked for his masters yeah right right now speaking of money let me throw this out to all three of you because i would love for you all to be in this position but um this just came down on the twitter wire that masterpiece son hersey he he signed with tennessee state university now tasha yep. and myself we attended tennessee state university they don't have two million dollars <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> I mean, well, where is it? <laughs> anywhere in they ain't two million dollars alone, nowhere. So, and with all due respect to Nashville, Tennessee, and and Northside's very fine Tennessee State University, he just signed a two million dollar endorsement deal with. Let me see what's the name of this. A web based company. Um. Tasha said his, it was his daddy's money. Your child gets, Mike, I'm coming to you with this. Your child gets offered $2 million endorsement deal in college as a freshman. You're jumping all over that, right? Uh, after I read everything, uh, for sure. Like, you can do so much with $2 million. <laughs> um, and you could put it so much over here. You could put it so much over here. You know, 70%. Even if you kept, you know, 10%. Like, here, 10%. Good job on getting this endorsement deal. You putting the rest of it over here. So, Hustle. $2 million. You turning that down? I mean, again, man, you got to look at the circumstance. Look at that smile. That means no. Right. <laughs> 
Percy ain't hurting for no money, man. Look right, right. <laughs> two million. He probably like that's breakfast. Right. So, you turn it down two million. How many? How many is that in, in pesos? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> They don't even have oh. no pesos in this country, probably. <laughs> <laughs> like two million. But no, I mean, I'm with Mike. You know, I'm going to read through it and make sure that yeah. my child is not getting hosed. But uh, uh, and look at the source: two million is nothing to him. And is that something that Percy brokered for Hersey? Because no one's just saying, "Okay, come on, Hersey, you at Tennessee State, we finna give you two mil." You, we all know, make the, his daddy went in there and made somebody say, "Uh," and that's how he that's how he got that. I wouldn't be saying the nine to nine. I'd be saying yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm like Mike. Luke was over these papers later. We about to go to the casino. <laughs> but yeah, I'm taking that two mil. I'm taking. I'm taking that two mil. I'm sorry that like that is outstanding. And Michael, you have been to North Nashville. You know it ain't two million dollars in that whole neighborhood. So hey, it might be soon, man. It's up and coming over there. I've right. Seen that it is. It is. It is. is I, I'll give you that. Stop it, Tasha. Now. So my Michigan fans, you sit tight right here on this one um, because I got to go to my Michigan alum on this. Mike, what Michigan player would have secured the biggest bag? Um, so I'm going to go old school first. I'm going to go old school. We suck lately. I'm going to go Mike Hart first because just how vocal he was. And mm. he had a really good smile. And they're just like, man, okay, cool. I'm, I'm going to buy whatever he's buying. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go uh Charles Woodson, of course. I and mean, I think that's everyone everyone's list just because of the swagger that he brought anywhere. He uh, never won Ohio State. He won a national title and the yeah, Hosman. Everything. Greatest man. Yeah. Um, and then I'm gonna go with some new players just because of the newer generation and they know how to brand themselves pretty well. Um, I'm gonna go with Jabril because I think he had a lot to brand. Uh, and I think he left a little bit too early, but I understand. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm, I'm go, kept him there. right? Yeah, I'm gonna go with Sean Gary because uh, again, I think he left a little too early, but he wanted to make that money, and he right out the gate he made his own uh, sports agency company. So I knew I think he had the right business uh, smarts there. And then I'm gonna go with Winovich um, just because I think he brands himself really well too. I totally forgot about Winovich. Good job by you, right? Marcus over there looking like he just signed his NIL. Um, <laughs> he sizzled. What Michigan player do you think would have would have secured the biggest bag? I forgot about Winovich too, because can you imagine how much shampoo he could have sold with that hair? <laughs> That's true. Man, That's he true. raised two million dollars just uh, doing the orange hair thing. Yeah, right. that's right. I mean, hey, I thought, he'd like knock you your block off too, though. He would. Now, I mean, going back, like he said, kind of old school. You, I mean, you think about. What Desmond Howard could have brought in. Oh, forgot about Desmond. Yeah. I mean, you think about any number of star players on that or anyone that had a popular name in Ann Arbor, they could have bought in money. And I mentioned it earlier, Denard Robinson, shoelace. Shoelace, yeah. Epic. And even his, uh, um, his pre uh, not predecessor, what are you trying to say when someone comes after you? Uh, Devin Gardner, who was a clean cut guy. He wasn't probably the best fit for that position, but he could have garnered a little money too. Stop Not a it, lot, Mike. I, Mike. Stop. But I stop mean, it, again, Mike. Like your Charles Woodsons, your spicy hot peppers. A lot of those guys. And, and can you imagine those banners would still be hanging in the Chrysler Center? Right now, speaking of, of that, you dropped the ball. It would have been Chris Webber in the Fab Five. Yeah, that's what I just said. Those banners still would have been hanging had that been allowed because Macy wouldn't have been wouldn't have had to do what he did and then lie about it and bring shame upon the other four teammates. That's true. No, but they would, yeah. but they would have had to be as a collective because uh, Ray Jackson probably wouldn't have got as much money as the <laughs> Don't others. do that. Don't do that. We're not gonna bet. We're not gonna do any. It's no spiders. Still would have called the as, time. Let's play those no spiders. Let's <laughs> <laughs> play those no spiders. Look, what stupid? <laughs> now, Marcus, Marcus, to you, real quick. The Reggie Bush said he wants his Hosman back. Should he get it? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, go ahead. This is for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, you giving it back? Are you gonna grandfather it in? I'm going to fight y'all on this. I'm going to say no. That's and right, the, Mike. And the the reason being is you got it was the rule at the time. Now, if we were to go back and go through all the past rules that we've done, let's say the tuck ball, are we going to give Oakland a championship then? 
Like it's a lot of different things that rules have changed and would have changed the whole outcome or Super Bowls, and we can't do that. Mm-mm, but his stats were his stats. And Rich, he broke here, the rules. Red boy. Red, uh, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of Ohio State players that also broke the rule in the same thing. Where Florida players did the same thing. Like, oh no, they don't get no love on this show. No, exactly, no, that's what I'm saying. So, <laughs> you, you gotta play you it all, that. not just one player or a, a team. So we gonna Talk get OJ his back? I, I, who? OJ, we gonna give his back? We did it. No, <laughs> the glove didn't fit. I agree on that. The glove didn't fit. Get that man his Heisman back. Let well, my glove wouldn't fit either. If I had a whole nother glove up under it, we're not going to retry this case. <laughs> that man should still be in jail. <laughs> right? He put on his glove. He's like, it don't fit. His, his fingers were fully stretched while he was trying to put a old bloody leather glove on that had been. Trying to blow his hand up like this. <laughs> you, bye. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop that. But hey, should, should, the, should the NCAA unfurl our banners from the Fab Five days? Uh, let, let's go with a non-Michigan fan. Stone, should, 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 should we unfurl those Final Four banners? Uh, Don't get kicked off this bottom square. Don't get kicked off this bottom square. Right. <laughs> I, I think so, man. I mean, to be honest with you, at the NCAA, this, this is, this is the parent talking. This ain't help. This just. They've been messing over for a long time, bro. That right. just point blank. They've been they've made billions of dollars, right? And, and capitalized on on that. So, I mean, hey, if it wasn't for the Fab Five, you know, I y'all are still running that. around in bikini draws trying to play pickup games <laughs> and white yeah, socks. So, yeah, <laughs> shots up to the, to the Fab Five. Now we're about to transition to some NFL, but stick around for a second, Stone, because your All hate. Right. For is just like everybody else's, and I'm ready to fight. I woke up to have breakfast. I'm ready to, to throw bolos now. Oh, man, I don't fight, man. I love you. You are. I'm gonna kill you with kindness. There we go. That's what every gun owner says. I don't fight. <laughs> <laughs> every gun owner says, "No, I don't fight no more." <laughs> look at my look at Mike up there grinning. He knows. He's like, I don't fight no more. <laughs> well, I still do. So <laughs> right. <laughs> no, you still do. You just asked me why you're at the state fair. <laughs> oh, right. Remember that lady you almost beat up for asking us a, a simple question? She was trying to be smart. She <laughs> oh, okay, that, that was different. Okay, okay. So that was different. So as we transition, America's team, your team, my team, everybody's team, no air quotes, Mike, America's team, the Dallas Cowboys, get their third installment on HBO's Hard Knocks. Do you think, number one, it's fair that Dallas keeps getting to go and several other teams haven't had a chance to go yet? And two, are you interested in watching the Dallas Cowboys this year on Hard Knocks? We'll start up at the top, Mike. Uh, yes and yes. Uh, is Or is it fair? Yes. I think it is fair because they built that. Like They built that dynasty of people watching the ugly, the bad, the good. Like that. Do that. I think we had, there was a saying of, you know, um, where everyone's watching, you know, never ignored type of thing. And that's what Dallas Cowboys brought. I'm definitely watching for sure. Um, just the fact that it is football. I mean, I don't, I was watching with the, the Browns. I don't care. You put the Jets up there, you put the Dolphins. <laughs> like, I'm, yeah, I'm going to still watch because I like how the, the behind the camera, the behind the NFL, you know, the NFL is very much like, oh, this is what you're supposed to see. So I like to see the behind the scene locker room and all the business stuff. Tasha, aside from the fact that HBO is not down in the DR yet, I think it's going to be down there at the end of July, um, and as well as Roku and Sling. Will you be tuning in? Does this move your needle having the Cowboys on Hard Knocks? No. So we're gonna leave that. We're gonna leave that right there. Stone. Yeah. Let me ask you. Let me ask you this a different way. Is Jerry Jones doing his team a disservice? by putting them under the spotlight when he needs to be focused on getting his team back into the playoffs. I mean, you said you started off America's team, right? America's team. Everybody comes to watch, so show it all. But I ain't going to watch it. <laughs> Damn, Spring fan. Spoken, spoken like, a, like a true Aryan brother. Aryan <laughs> Ram. There you go, Hustle. <laughs> 
So now, to all my count, look at Mike done started lunch on us. Look, for, for <laughs> uh, is that a pickle? That's you- a pickle. He cramping up over there. He cramping up. We we gonna we gonna keep you on that on that hamster wheel though. But now put you some fruit punch Kool Aid around it. Dip it into some fruit punch the powder. Wow. Speaking of North Nashville, right? Um, but Cowboy fans, I do have some bad news for you though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say it with your chest. You shouldn't want Dallas on hard knocks because in its 20, 25 year history, no team that's been on hard knocks went on to go to the Super Bowl that year. So that means the like, Titans in there, baby. Let's go. Let's let's keep them on that in. Let's keep them on. Nah. <laughs> so Dallas, can we extend that contract? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, lifetime deal. Okay, so let's go over to Aaron Rodgers. Now, we all know what's been going on. Aaron Rodgers are having problems with Green Bay. Is he going to play for them? Is he not going to play? Is he going to force his way out? Are they going to call his bluff? Well, today is a huge day in that development because today is the final day to opt out for COVID. Now, what this means for Aaron Rodgers is if he decides to opt out for COVID as opposed to just skipping training camp and holding out, he'll save himself about $23 million. Do you think he will have the stones, Marcus Stone, to do that today? Discount double check, man. He got $23 million in his penny <laughs> sack. Come on, man. So you that said there's no need to do that. Just hold out. It's about the principalities in this thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying stick to your guns. Don't duck out this way and keep your money. Hold the team's feet to the fire. Is that what you're saying? I mean, he came this far. So if he if if he if he fold now, come on, bro. If you so fold it, it now, really you, about, if he fold now, it's about the money. You, then you're Maurice Jones Drew. Remember when he tried to hold out and the team said fine, then he came back right before the start of the season. Like uh, y'all still got my lock. <laughs> and he was never the same after it either. Was he not? And Melvin Gordon too. Remember he tried to hold out on Denver. They said okay. So the so these target. are totally different. This is Aaron Rodgers though. Right, right. This Aaron Rodgers right. has way more leverage. Mike, does, does do you save your twenty million and just sit out for COVID this year? No, I'm 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 with Mark Stone on this one. Like, he has the money. It's not even about that. It's about principle, and it's about treating him how he's wanting to be treated. You're gonna charge me twenty three million. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna add it on to what you're gonna pay me or whatever team is gonna pay me. So it ain't yeah. nothing to me. Anybody will pay that money for Aaron Rodgers. Tasha T. Sizzle, would you sit out for COVID? I go old school on my cinema facts. Look, and I'm sick. <laughs> you gonna you use a PTO? <laughs> I ain't coming in, dog. I, I can't dog, make it, bro. Dog, I holler at y'all week one <laughs> if my money's right. I don't. I don't think that's how it works, Tasha. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it works that way. But point well taken. All right, let's let's move on. Um, now, Stone. Correct me if I'm saying his name wrong, but Miss Shikari Richardson, Dallas' is own. She has made the news something terrible the last 48 hours. She got busted for, for marijuana, not possession, but inject injection, ingestion, let's put it that way. And she's been suspended for 30 days, which disqualifies her from the Olympic 100 meter race. But she still may be able to go and do the, the, the relay race. She because that's gonna be later. Is this much to do about nothing? Should she have been suspended? Do we want her in the Olympics? Let's start with you, Stone. I mean, do I want her in the Olympics? Of course. I mean, you know, her story alone, right. um, what she's what she's done, what she's fought for, the fact that, bro, she's she's done it at a young age, you know. Um, it, it's it's the storyline and it, it it speaks to the inner community, right? Um, the the sad pieces that she had we're witnessing a lapse in judgment based on what her circumstances are. Now, the rules are the rules. You know, you can't, you can't do anything about that. Um, it's the timing, right? So it's the timing right. of the decision that she made. Now, had it been the Michael Phelps situation where it would have been off season, then that's a different right. story because his was longer, right? Right. Because, and, and, and I'm glad you said that to make the comparisons – well, those two comparisons, because people were not saying that correctly on Twitter. They were saying, well, what about Michael Phelps? That was a totally different scenario, and he did get punished even tougher than she did. So let's just get that part out there, that at the extra point, we're going to keep paint a fair picture of those two mm-hmm. scenarios. 
Look, they're they're yeah. nothing alike. Both of them got busted smoking weed. One yeah. was not right before the Olympics. Well, so they didn't both get busted. So he didn't pop hot on the test. It was a it was a leaked photo. So it was only speculation with a harsher punishment. She got she got well, he got it worse. On the test. Right. right. So, and, and that's her, even worse because you know you're gonna be tested right before a major event like that. Mike, it's weed. Clarence Thomas on the sitting on the Supreme Court, he said that, that they're thinking about decriminalizing weed at the federal level, which will trickle down to the state level. Is this much ado about nothing, or should she have had better judgment? Or both? So we got different platforms here. Like you're talking about federal, state. We're not just we're talking about the world and we're talking about the best of the best mm -hmm. and what we do. And they have so many, they have a whole list of what drugs you can and cannot intake. And we all know the Olympics is very strict. Um, you know, you go back, and I know it wasn't the same, but you know, the Russian teams are like five right. of them positive for performance enhancing. I know it's not weed, but they canceled that whole team. Like they're like, all right, bye. Like yes, they should have. Yeah. Yeah. It's yes. very serious. And so I, I, I agree. You know, she was just young. She was going through a lot, and she just made a poor decision, as we all know, young people do. And. Uh, I think if it was like NCAA, we all know that they get caught, you know, with weed or whatever smoking videos or whatnot. They get two or three chances. Like they get probation, mm -hmm. they get a mm -hmm. slap on the wrist, don't do it again. This, right. this ain't that. This is the Olympics. Right, right. And like, and I'm glad you made the distinction that this is the Olympics. T. Sizzle, your thoughts? Um, I agree with both. Um, but and, and as an avid weed smoker. <laughs> that, talk that talk. You, we had to get to the fifty minute mark before we started this subject, just for this reason. I mean, I, mean I, I mean, I got a bag with me now. I didn't want to put it on it because it's gonna be family friendly. I was gonna hold it up and shake it as so. But the views of T Sizzle do not reflect the views of the extra point <laughs> and its affiliates and sponsors. Eat your pickle, Mike. No, go ahead, Tosh. But you still have to be responsible. Yeah, she was in Oregon, which is a smoke-free state. How many people do we know, just think, not even athletes, people in your everyday life who, one, cannot get a job, who cannot keep a job because they refuse to stop smoking? Mm -hmm. you, she, she is at, I mean, up here, and she has, I mean, and, and dro talk about dropping the bag, fumbling the bag. Oh. Ath oh. Olympic athletes only really get appreciated every four years. Think mm -hmm. about how many endorsements right, she has lost. Right. Mm -hmm. Think Keep about going. all the all the endorsements that she and the money she has lost by simply not being responsible in what she was doing. Because y'all, at the end of the day, it is weed, man. It's weed, man. It's it like makes weed. me feel it's good. Like, 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 but but I'm saying it's weed. Like, okay, even if I am an avid pot smoker. If I got a big job coming up, then I already know I'm gonna have to go and put that thing down and people pick up some Bud Light or some Natty Ice or, or or throw you back a vodka shot or drink you some wine. What if you need that to get you to sleep? Find another way to get to sleep. Or at the very least, where should non weed smoking friends? I surround myself with clean pee, Michigan Mike, uh, Hustle, <laughs> <laughs> sir, <laughs> sir. I will pay handily for some clean glacier water. You know what I'm saying? Keep it in the family. Keep the money in the family. You can, you gotta have you some friends that don't partake. Like I mean, but yeah, she should have had someone. Sure. Someone should have been there to say, "Girl, no, don't do that. Don't, girl. Look at what you finna do. Look, look at what look what you're about to accomplish." Right, and and Shamika Nicole, I totally agree. You just can't say effort to the rules. If, right. if, I told, if Mike told me right now, hey, man, whatever happened to that job interview? Oh, man, I ain't passed the drug test. The look on his face through the phone is going to be like, what, what do you mean you didn't pass the drug test? Like, I'm right here, dog. Bladder full. I'm right here. <laughs> like, I, got a, I, got a, I just had a whole cup of coffee. Like, like damn. Like, we can Maybe work on that after the job. strong and yellow. <laughs> I got the asparagus. <laughs> right. Like, like can, if, if, even if you do get weak, in your weekend state and partake on the weekend, you gotta have somebody on your team that's just sucker free, man. You know, or, or especially during this time, like what? What is that? It's like, like Mike said, it's the, this is the Olympics. This is not oh, we got the SEC track meet or the or the NCAA nationals coming up. This is the freaking 
Olympics. The All IOC right, so look, so does look. not play. Sizzle. Yes. Check it out. So we mm -hmm. talking about the Olympics, so we're gonna keep it 100 because the Olympics ain't ain't getting off that easy. Okay, so okay. We're gonna flip the oh, now, I can't wait to hear how you defend. Come on. You yes. defend no. Us. No, nah, so Olympics ain't gonna get off that easy. So yes, we're gonna stick to the rules, but at the same time, you're gonna you're gonna ban other things. You're oh ban yes, swim yes, caps. swimming caps. Yeah, Man, look, that's a whole wait, other thing. Oh, uh -uh, uh -uh. uh -uh. No, 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 no. No, uh, hold on. Let me take these headphones off. I'm sitting up here looking like a 50 year old pebbles right now because I got my hair up in a fucking top knot. See these that's six different. Six rows? I'm looking Mike, like you give me one of the pickles, one. Mike. <laughs> it is the same. You you want to ban things? First of all, we don't know what she was taking the weed for. What she? I mean, hell, enjoy no, it. Let's just go and put it she out She said she was looking after her mother passed to help her cope. That's what she said. Right. And but I mean, I hey, that's her story. She's sticking to it. That's but smoke. you've been smoking, if, right? You've been smoking. Now, what if I was on the? What if I was Simone Manuel? The, the the black chick that's the black girl that swims. What if that was me and I'm out here with these corn, with these corn rolls taken out of an afro, and I can't wear a particular swim cap to protect my natural coil hair? Right, but because I'm saying the elite athletes because the elite athletes don't require this. I think corn rolls and a banned substance are two different things in in this it, in this regard. I'm I mean, talking about is. the governing body. Right, the governing body. The Olympics. You, you allow what you want to allow. But okay, so yeah, but, it, well, okay. Well, remember, remember when they first went to those? How everybody wears those swimsuits now that are the whole like the whole body suit. Mm -hmm. Remember, they wanted to ban those until if somebody opened up their mouth and said, "No, we're gonna wear these." But see, no, there's no one there to defend certain things. If it doesn't benefit them, they don't want to defend it. But but here's the thing, I get that. But as it relates to Shikari, she didn't have a head cap problem. Her locks were flowing and running all in the wind. She exactly. Was weed. But yeah. and that's she was the on thing. That burn up. And that's the thing. It's weed. And you even said this. Anybody who smokes, it's not even weed, because I smoke cigars too. I mean, I hell, I'm smoking some everything down here for crack. But <laughs> when I'm smoking. The last thing I want to do is go out and freaking run right. 100 meters, 200 meters, anchor or relay. That's not what I'm trying to do. And this is me as a weed smoker. I hate the fact that weed is supposed to be like a drug. How many, you, you don't, look, I'm, I'm going to get off my soapbox on that. The girls So smoked. look, they, they oh. could have they could have provided an exception, right? Because in even in their rules, it's stipulated that it can be utilized in medicinal purposes for medical mm -hmm. reasons mm -hmm. to deal with traumas, to deal with mm -hmm. all of those things. So mm -hmm. if they wanted to, they could have overlooked the situation, but they did not want to. So they the governing body is only highlighting what they want to highlight exactly. for the purposes well, well, of that Okay, I got, I got exactly. you on that. But let me let me tag my partner Mike back in because we this is a tag team battle role now because I'm with Mike because like he said to, to start off this segment, Russia didn't get no mulligan when they was popping the roids. The they whole thing. Roids is not used as a therapeutic drug. Those are performance enhancing. So, so, Roids for for medical or mental health reasons. So you were still, here, Mike. Yeah, you were still saying that the Olympics were giving them an out by saying like, "Hey, if you are going through a trauma or going through something, all you got to do is get a doctor's note, essentially." Doctor's and then note. It, absolutely. But she didn't do that. She been smoking. Because she been smoking. She been smoking. I will say it can be used as an advantage in some in a lot of cases, especially when you're building muscle. You know, power lifters do it all the time because they need, you know, 10,000 or 10,000 something calories and they can't eat it normally. So they need that build that appetite. But so she's we don't not trying to gain weight or muscle. She, she's what? already there. What? She's not trying Come to on. gain weight. Or you don't know how long she's she been put... smoking. Oh, she and, and this is not an ambiguous rule. Like, she been like, let's, okay, because if you get popped, Right before the Olympics, you've been smoking and you couldn't stop in time. She might have tried to stop a week ahead and didn't flush her system out. You know how we smokers try to play that game. Exactly. Oh, I got about a week of Like, but, but, but that's stuff. the rule. 
no, so and the, the rule is, is that you so it's it's allowed, but if you're tested, it's supposed to be a certain milligram within your specimen. She was above, so that means it was just recent. It wasn't that mm -hmm. she was habitual, it was the count that was in that was found. right. So had it been under, she would have still been allowed. So don't even try to come for me, PL, because you know I know myself. So, okay. So so and then, so and then, Mike. And then, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now back to Mike's point. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna correct you on the weight thing. When Sasha was in high school, it was a guy who played football. Sasha don't smoke. <laughs> no, she don't. Don't even put that on her. Buy your Mary Jane. It said Mary Jane's coffee, not Mary Jane's coffee. <laughs> <laughs> he was very he was very talented. But when he got to high school, they wanted him to switch positions and he had to put weight on. And when I asked him, I said, Jalen, are you still going to run? I forgot what, what it was. And he says, no, not with all this weight on me. It was the 100 or 200. He says, I can't run that with all this weight on me. Mike, she wasn't smoking to gain weight and gain muscle because at a certain weight, she's not going to be as effective running because she's she's accustomed to running at her weight and her size. You're thinking individual can, base, though. You're thinking yeah, very small. I'm thinking she, like large, like people that are using it to get right, an advantage. Right, but she, but she wasn't using it to get an advantage. That girl was using it because like we, us, like us smokers do. We just but you can't say, smoke. okay, this one rule is for this one person because Tasha said you got to make a rule for everybody. But we don't know who else has been testing positive for marijuana, as as uh, Marcus said. There's a legal limit. We don't know who else has tested positive. Anybody but that makes it even worse, though, Tasha. If you over, if they allow you to have a small percentage and you still over that, that means you token. Because the girl is a smoker. We have all agreed to that. That girl, that girl been chiefing. She been and chiefing. She just, and she just got caught up. She said, hell, I'm in Oregon. Let me go up here and give me some of this good, good. Right. I'm smoke. It was a dollar. Said, and, 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 right. And they said, ma'am, come here. Let me holler at you. Take this cup. Mm -hmm. And she was like, what, what cup? Huh? What? Huh? Cup. See, that's when we cup. have a Michigan mic on the jack. Like, I'm finna meet you at the 7-Eleven. Bring that, bring that cup with you. And I'm going to hand you the $100 bill right there on the scene. We Equal swap. I put it that money, put so, the money in my so, hand. Give me the cup. We rolling. And it could have been also different if the way that she reacted. So she didn't really go off and say, oh, man, you know, actually, I just talked to my doctor and he kind of prescribed this X, Y and Z. I didn't get the note or I didn't know the protocol. He, she could have responded that way if it was truthful. But she responded, my bad. I was going through this loss and I just used it. And that's what I used and to that's the truth. And that, and don't, that's do your, and don't do your mama like that. So because the last, last scenario I want to paint to my non-smokers on the panel. And yes, they are non-smoking, and we love them, America. You ain't always got to be toked out, although I'm 420 friendly. I'm just saying, but you, you, I mean, that being your right state of mind is not a bad thing. Now, Mike, if something, let's just say unforeseen happens, something tragic happened in your life, it doesn't have to be something as tragic as a mother passing, because we're never going to speak nothing like that into existence. Mm -hmm. But something tragic happens, and I'm talking to you, I'm confiding in you, you too, Marcus, and I say, well, Hell, man, this what gets me by. If you're not a smoker, you might you're be like, oh, do it. I'm all right, man. I'm good, though. But thank you, though, man. A smoker just don't just start smoking. Either you smoke or you don't. You don't just exactly. this, this work like that. Uh, I know smokers that could be around a room full of smokers and not inhale one time. I'm naming no names. <laughs> I'll pass. Give me the shots. <laughs> right. There you go. Right there. I I've seen him in a room full of, of smokers and he don't take one puff. Don't judge you. Don't give you no speech. None of that stuff. He just don't smoke with you. And Marcus, I'm sure the same way. Although those glasses are police tent. Don't worry about my glasses, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> As we move on. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to close the show. I want to I want to get y'all's lighthearted opinion on something. We all know that it's 4th of July weekend. Which means the grills will be starting to get fired up here in, in about 24 hours. My question to the esteemed panel, and we'll start with Mike and go clockwise around. What is one traditional 4th of July entree that you will not eat no matter who makes it? Not eat? That you will not eat no matter who brings it. That's kind of tough because my family cooks pretty good. So Oh, they throw down. Probably coleslaw. I don't do coleslaw. I don't mess with that. Who eats coleslaw? Coleslaw. Oh, thank. Oh, 
I don't. That's what I'm saying. I don't. Like, who eats that? Is that? I mean, you know me. I eat everything else. So, <laughs> and the plate be clean. But no. Okay. So coleslaw. I totally agree with you on coleslaw. See, the Marcus, you you're a, a chef. <laughs> so so the, so I'm interested to hear your answer on this. What what traditional Fourth of July entree will you not eat? Whether even if they ask you to make it. What's a traditional Fourth of July meal? You you, you ain't no. You in Texas? You ain't. No, Ribs, brisket, uh, hamburger, hot dog, potato That's salad, it. baked beans, coleslaw, um, all of the fixings. What, 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 what do you mean? You know, potato salad. You know, I don't. I don't have traditional meals, Doc. What you making for Fourth of July? Some scalloped potatoes and then some shrimp. Ain't no telling, man. You might get some smoked lobster. Who I don't know. It just depends. Now that's on true. He is from New Orleans, so we, let's just move on with that one because. <laughs> <laughs> because it would be a talk up all day trying to figure out his entree. No, so says yeah. brisket. That that brisket's pretty hard to make, uh, especially when people don't know how to do it. So it's hard. I would I would just like watch everyone eat it, and I'm like, but brisket, you got to keep your eye on the brisket maker. Yeah, they can, because you can, yeah, you can dry it out. It'll tap a tooth. It'll tap a tooth. Tasha T. Sister, what's your entree? Oh, I was, potato, oh, I was. potato salad. The Why? only way that I'm eating potato salad is if Jesus is coming back and feeding the multitudes with that ish. I don't like it. Now, how are you going to say Jesus is ish in the same sentence? See, that's, that's what smokers do. Um, I'm okay. I, I don't, I don't, first of all, I don't like mayo. I, okay, I, that's fair. I, yeah, so, I mean, I've never seen anybody eat coleslaw on 4th of July, but even coleslaw, I wouldn't eat it if somebody had it because it's mayo-based. What, what about uh, deviled eggs? No. Ooh, what about deviled eggs? Now, the thing is about that, I have eaten those, but it, I mean, I would eat one, maybe two. And like, even deviled like, eggs are delicious. If I have tuna, I put a, the smallest amount, like don't eat my tuna. I'm going to have to make your own separate because I refuse to put a ton of mayo in it because it's nasty. Now, Tiffany makes a good deviled egg. Y'all don't know Tiffany. That's our friend. She makes a real good deviled egg. But no, I don't. It's just something about that mayo that just doesn't sit right in, in my system. I can't. Where did this food go? Where now, I just wanted to just show y'all how, how. See, today's meal is going to be tuna melts by your boy PL. But you can't have it without that mayo, dog. <laughs> Woo! Shouts out to potato salad. Shouts out to Miracle Whip mayonnaise. Shouts out to tuna salad. I can't do, I can't do Miracle Whip. I got to do just regular mayo. No, what? I would have to do. I can do Miracle Whip before mayo. I will say that. Hellman's? No, brings out the what? best. No, Hellman's is too eggy. What do you say, Marcus? Miracle Whip or, or, or Hellman's? Uh, I'm gonna go with the real mayo, man. Now back Yo, in back in back in my adolescence, you know it was it was all I had was miracle. You're the youngest person on the panel talking about back in your. <laughs> I know I'm we'll pushing fifty I over here. <laughs> I done pushed it over. <laughs> well, mine real quick is 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 hot links, so it don't matter. I like what? what? You can't do a Earl Campbell, man? Huh? I said you don't want none then. <laughs> no, no, no. I will be bypassing the hot links tomorrow. But I will be eating everything else. Every, <laughs> no, the hot links, it's not about, I mean, the, it just tears up your palate to where if you drink water, it don't help. If you drink uh, soda, it burns it even more. You know what I'm saying? And if you drink a beer, it just foams up in your mouth oh, with all man. that hot sauce. I forgot, you a baby when it comes to spice. You, you be like, pepper's too spicy. Man, what'd you put in here? I'm like, man, it's just pepper. What are you talking about? Yeah, I, that Texas spice, the, the, like the, the crawfish. I had to. I had to do. I had to, to work around some of the spices, but but I, I made it. And you spit at me at too easy. If you're not eating spicy <laughs> crawfish, Paul, you might as well spit. not eat them. I'm sorry, I did. I spit out oh. some hot stuff across the table. <laughs> that boy is spit because he said it was the it, salsa. Was so he know, he know how to eat them now. <laughs> that's I'm right. Yeah, that's true. Crawfish cool. now. <laughs> yeah. Crack, crack. We, we crack, gave crack. Him, We gave him some lessons. Yeah, so I, yes. I was indoctrinated, so I, I, I'm okay with that. But the hot sausage links, especially them red ones, with the with the like the little the little beanie ball on the end with the tied up beanie ball with the, the tail. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I'll be sick as sick as a dog, y'all. So um, mm -mm. <laughs> so uh, on behalf 
of Miracle Whip Mayonnaise Pickles. What else we have in here today? May Jane's Coffee. Um, uh, Marcus, as we close out, any shout outs, my man? Hey, just be love, man. That's it. He's just too cool for school. T Sizzle, any shout outs? Of course I do. Shout out to my New York, wait a minute. There we go. My New York Metropolitans, Bobby Bonilla Day was yesterday. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Bobby Bonilla. (laughs) (laughs) Shout out to him. The best deal of the century. Michigan Mike, any shout outs for you? Uh, Just everyone stay safe this weekend. Don't be stupid. Don't be stupid this weekend. Stay safe. Find you a friend that don't smoke weed if you cannot stay off the twister. And um, and and, and last but not least, Michigan Athletic Department President, uh, everybody else involved, alumni, do the right thing. Hand Chris Webber them keys so he can go unfurl those banners. <laughs> Hand him the keys so he can unfurl them banners. We 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 already had to endure the timeout. The man's in the Hall of Fame now. You're holding up uh, Jalen Rose from going to the College Basketball Hall of Fame because you won't unfurl them banners and give him his points Get them banners out of the basement of Shim Beckler Hall. Now, you turn them loose. (laughs) Turn them loose. (laughs) Then that concludes the extra point. We'll see y'all next Friday. Peace.